Lockpicker here, and welcome back to my Lockpicking Homeschool series. The video I have for you today is on how to start progressing forward in your lockpicking journey. Practice, practice, practice. You don't need to practice for hours a day, but just try to always make sure you pick at least one lock per day. So far we've gone over how locks operate, how to open them by single pin picking, the different pen states that can be presented to you while picking, and some tensioning considerations for locks with standard pens. In order to start moving forward, what you should do is keep practicing your clear plastic locks and your cutaway locks until you can start getting them consistently without looking through the window. And once you can do that, you'll be ready to start moving on to some more traditional locks. What I would suggest for the next step would be going through my progressive lock list that I will go through with you in a moment. My progressive lock list is a list that I created for people starting out so they would have a path to follow and they would be able to figure out where to start because that's a common question, what lock should I get? This progressive lock list starts out from easier and progresses roughly to more difficult. It is a lock list that contains 10 locks. The first lock on the list is one very familiar to you. It's the clear acrylic pad lock, which you've seen in a few of my videos. And also, it is the cutaway lock. So whatever your preference is. I prefer the cutaway lock for a few reasons. One, it provides more realistic feedback. And two, you can take it apart and progressive pen it, and you can add security pens down the road or start at one pen and add up to six. It's more versatile and more bang for your buck. The second lock on my list is the quintessential beginner lock, the master lock model number three. This lock is a four pin lock with all standard pins. This lock has pretty loose tolerances and is a pretty easy open for those starting out. Um, it makes a really great transition for people moving on from a clear lock or a cutaway lock. And this is a great lock for people just beginning. Now we're going to be moving into locks with some security pins, which is a topic we'll get into more detail down the road. But common security pins are spool pins and serrated pins. This master lock model number 140 is the third lock on the progressive lock list. And this lock is a four pin lock and it contains one spool. This spool isn't very difficult to set and should not trip you up. And you should be able to get this lock open at this point. This lock has some pretty loose tolerances and isn't too bad to get open. The fourth lock on my progressive lock list is this Brinks 40 millimeter laminated padlock. Now they do have a brass version of this and they're both the same core and the same experience. This is just the one that I own. This is a four pin lock and inside it contains one to two spools. On this one it does have two spools in it. Um, but what makes this lock special is that it has really great feedback and you can really understand what's going on as you're picking this lock. You will be able to navigate your false set very easily and feel the counter rotation as you're lifting the spools. And this is a really great introductory lock to people that are starting to get into security pins. The fifth lock on the progressive lock list is this master lock model number 570. This lock is a five pin lock and it contains four spools and one standard pin. You cannot take this lock apart unless you take out the core retaining pin inside of it. Um, this lock is a dead core lock, which means there's no spring tension on the core, which is a unique picking experience. What you can do with this lock is really start to use it to help you transition to locks with more security pins, and it's a great introduction. The sixth lock on my progressive lock list is this master lock model number 911. Now this lock is a really great lock. It has some decent tolerances on it. What I really like about it is, is you can take the core out and repin it. The core comes pinned up to five, but it can take up to six pins. And the way it comes um, to you is it comes pinned with five spool pins and one lightly serrated pin. This lock can really give you a good example of what counter rotation feels like as you're lifting a spool. And it does pose the um, difficulty of this core has a lot of spring tension on it. 
And a lot of times when you have this lock picked open, you might think you're on a false set and all you needed to do was crank it over to get it open and a lot of people sometimes open this lock up and don't realize it's picked to shear. But this is a really great lock and you can progressive pin it and really start to learn security pins. You can really grow with this lock, which I like. The seventh lock on my progressive lock list is a really well-built lock. It's the Commando Marine. It's a laminated pad lock. It is built very strong. All these um, laminations are interlocked so you couldn't just cut the rivets off and pull it apart. This lock you cannot um, take apart and gut, but it is a really great core. Um, it's a five pin lock, but what this lock starts to offer, what the other locks had not offered before, is serrated pins. This lock has serrated key pins and serrated driver pins and some spool pins. Online you can see some videos of people taking these apart. I do not believe the spools are serrated but the key pins and driver pins are. And when you're starting to learn serrated pins, this is a great lock to learn on, and it does have a little bit of a difficult keyway, so that can really help you start to learn um, navigating keyways that are a little bit uh, more narrow. And this lock is also a dead core lock and um, a lot of fun to get open. The eighth lock on my progressive lock list is this American lock model number 1100. Um, this is a five pin lock. You can take the core out, you can progressive pin it, and also pin the lock up to six pins. Now, if this lock did come pinned up to six pins, it would easily be considered um, the number 10 slot on the lock list. Um, the pins that come on this lock are serrated key pins, serrated driver pins, and serrated spools, which really makes you learn tension control and setting to shear, you got to be very careful that you don't overset anything. But since this lock list is about progressing, this lock is technically um, a very difficult lock and a huge milestone for someone to open up, but it's in the 8 slot because it's a 5 pin lock. But I do consider American locks the top of the low security market, and if you can start getting these open consistently, you should be very proud. This is a really tough lock and a really great lock to strive to learn to open. The ninth lock on my progressive lock list is the Master Lock Model 410 Lockout Tagout. Now, when you look at the keyways, the keyway on the green one is the one meant to be in the number 9 slot and not the blue one. The one in the green color is a very difficult keyway and it's very hard to um, set with a 25 thousandths pick. It can be done but the one on the blue keyway is very open and on top of that the green one typically you need to make a custom tension wrench for it to be more comfortable to pick. It takes about a 45 thousandths top of the keyway. Um, these locks are really great. They have good tolerances they're a six pin lock and they contain five spools and one lightly serrated in chamber five. These locks come with really great keys that are got some excellent bidding. But it always makes me wonder why Master Lock made such a great core for a lockout tagout lock, which is arguably a very important um, thing to have, but they couldn't transfer this technology and these cores into the rest of their product lines because by far this is Master Lock's best core that I have seen from a pick resistance standpoint. Now the tenth lock on the progressive lock list is this Abus Titanium Model 80 Ti 50. What makes this lock special is it has really excellent tolerances and it can be very hard to set. It contains spool pins and often as you're setting a spool pin you drop down everything and you need to start over. Binding order is crucial in opening these locks. Now some of these Abus Titaniums have better tolerances than others. Some can usually open easily but most of them are very quite difficult picks and this lock really will challenge you in trying to learn proper binding order, tension control, and also a lot of them come with pretty good bidding on the keys as well. The biggest um, disappointment on these locks is that 
they do not contain ball bearings inside the lock body and a lot of these hasps can be shimmed pretty easily so you can bypass the lock altogether but from a lock picking standpoint these are really great locks so what we've gone over is my progressive lock list and if you can progress through that it should be able to help you grow as a picker very well a couple other considerations I would like you to consider is also picking up a quick set style lock for down the road because you can progressive pen these and start to add security pens in and these are a great way to save some money when you're learning to pick locks I really recommend you get a quick set as well you can also get a schleg lock which you can progressive pen and add some security pens as you go but the key way on these is a little bit more difficult and when you're learning you don't want to have um, keyway difficulty you want to learn to pick the shear and my ultimate goal this is for really down the road is hopefully I'll be able to get you guys to get your first medical open down the road which is a really great lock and would be a great feat if we can get there together alright so I want to get a couple of these locks open for you guys in just a moment the first thing I'd like to do is get open some locks that I think that everyone should be able to pick at this point. But please just remember, the most important thing you can do at this point is just practice, practice, practice. Just try to pick a lock at least once a day. It doesn't need to be anything difficult, but just keep the skill set current because lock picking is a diminishing skill set and you just need to try to at least pick one lock a day. What I have in front of us is the master lock number three. This lock is the second lock off my progressive lock list. I'm going to open it up with bottom of the keyway tensioning and a standard hook in 25 thousandths. And this lock can be opened either clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm going to go for counterclockwise. It's a four pinner with all standard pins and is a great lock for those first starting out. And now that we have this one open, I'm going to load up the master lock 140 in the vise. Okay, we got the master lock number 140 up in the vise. It's the third lock on my progressive lock list. This lock does contain one spool. What I'm going to do is use top of the keyway tension in 40 thousandths and a standard hook in 25 thousandths. You can get this lock with a bottom of the keyway tensioner as well, but I just like top of the keyway better. One, two a little false set, 3, let's see, 4, okay, pin 1 is what was holding us up. Now this is a great little 4 pin lock for those starting out. This is the fourth lock off my progressive lock list, the Brinks 40 millimeter laminated pad lock. It's a 4 pin lock that contains 1 to 2 spools. What's really special about this lock is it provides really great feedback which you can really enhance if you use a top of the keyway tensioner in 50 thousandths like this, which I recommend you um, check out at some point. I'm going to see what it takes to get this lock open, but I do not recommend you go too much past this lock on the progressive lock list because we haven't really covered security pins in much detail yet. I'm going to use my standard hook in 25 thousandths and we'll see what it takes to get it open. Pin 1 feels to be binding. I'm going to try to set that one. Okay, that feels set. Two, feels set. Got a little turn on the core. Three, feels set. And four, opened us up. The last lock I suggest you start practicing on is a quick set lock. Um, you can buy a whole bunch of these locks on places like eBay for pretty cheaply and have a lot of locks to um, practice on. What's great about these is you can take them apart and progressive pin them, which is a great way to save money and a great way to learn, and you can add security pins as you go. This one is pinned up to five with all standard pins, and I am going to pick it for you right now. Let's see what it takes to get it open. One, two, a little click on three. We click on five. One. Two, three. 
Okay, and we're open. So, I'm going to quickly just take this lock apart for you just to see what the inside looks like. We're going to go over how to gut locks down the road, but let's just do this for you quickly so you can see. So, Four and five. All right, so what you're seeing in front of you is these are the key pens. One, two, three, four, and five here. You can see they're all different lengths because they all correspond to the key. And here's all the standard driver pens. Here's a better look at what those look like. And I'll get a photo for up for you in just a second. So I'd just like to reiterate to everyone that please just remember to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. That is what will ultimately make you get better. Just try to pick one lock a day and with time you will start to see improvements. Um, learning to pick locks can be quite frustrating at times, but just do not give up. Just having that tenacity to not quit really can make opening up these locks a lot easier. Um, none of these locks are easy at first, but with time you'll start to gain the skills you need to open them. But if anyone has any questions or suggestions, I please urge you to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And if you did like this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.